Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Using what we learn in this video, this is what we will be able to achieve with the help of a little bit of Quixel Megascan assets and some creativity, essentially. Welcome back. In this episode, we will be taking a look at Chaos Destruction Basics. This is Unreal Engine version 5.01, and we currently have a first person shooter project, the default template open. The very first thing we need to do is change our mode. You can change the mode up here to go into fracture mode. And in here we have a bunch of different options available to us uh, regarding the fracturing. We will be going through some of the more basics. And the very most basic part is that you need to first have a static mesh. In this case, we could just pick something in the world here, like this cube, for example. This cube over here is a static mesh and has a static mesh component. If we were to go here and click generate, generate, we get the option to create a geometry collection. So creating something here called uh, GC for geometry collection and uh, test cube, for example, and then create a geometry collection. We will now be creating in our content folder an asset that is a geometry collection. And our um, static mesh here is now immediately replaced also. You can see that it is actually a geometry collection uh, object instead of a static mesh now. Now in the top right over here, we can see our fracture results. So we currently have one object over here, which represents this whole block. If we want to fracture it further, we can use these different fracturing tools to achieve this. So by clicking, for example, the uniform uh, fracturing tool, we can immediately see that we get some cracks in here. And the cracks are generated based on Voronoi points that are generated uh, by the settings over here. If I can just manage to get this one to move down. There we go. So here are the fracture settings. You have a bunch of different things that you can tweak around and they depend a little bit depending on what kind of fracture setting you're actually choosing. So you can have some randomness if you want to. You can have a minimum and a maximum value. So if we put in 50 here, we will have 50 different Voronoi uh, sites that will be generating these fractures. And yeah, so there's a bunch of different things here. We'll just keep it like this uh, because we don't need to go too deep in it for now. And the next thing you just need to do is click Fracture. Now you can see that we have gotten an additional amount of uh, objects here. And we can see the different levels of fractures that we've created now as well. We have a level zero, which consists of one object, and a level one, which consists of 50 objects now. If we want to get a feel how our fracturing has been performed now, we can hold down Shift and press E to have the different parts uh, eject from each other so we can get a grasp of how the thing is breaking apart. And if we want to uh, return them, we can just press Shift and Q to return them to the same position that they were previously. In addition to that, we can also change our different levels of view. So Shift, W and S will allow you to traverse the different types of uh, levels. So you can see over here we have a fracture level root that's currently selected. It consists of one object. Shift, W again will show us all. And Shift, one, Shift, W again will show us fracture level one, which consists of our uh, root level object, which is one, which is corresponding to this number here, and our 50 sub objects over here as well. From here, we can choose to fracture this further if we wanted to. So just having this selected like this and clicking fracture again, you can see that another level will be generated and it will have an additional amount of objects generated from that. And again, using these different dropdowns or using the different uh, hotkeys, you can choose to see what that fracturing will look, look like as an end result as well. Now, in addition to doing this, you can also do 
smaller chunks if you wanted to. So the selection tool here allows us to select on a different level what we want to affect. So if we were to select all here, we select all the different clusters. If we select, uh, let's see, we can choose to have siblings and children and parents. So we can undo selections, we can invert selections, we can just click on objects here manually. You can see I can click on the different clusters. There's a lot of different ways to uh, choose different parts based on their relationships with each other and the selection tools. So you can, if you choose something like these green ones or turquoise ones, or maybe teal, uh, this number here represents a cluster over here which has subclusters under it. And if we were to choose children, for example, you can see that it marks all the children that is beneath that hierarchy, essentially. So the selection tools here allows us to be uh, very explicit and granular with how we select things if we don't want to manually click around uh, like this. And you can click around like this if you wanted to, holding down shift or uh, control depending on your needs. So that's another way that you can uh, control and select different parts of the geometry collection. Next up is how do we actually break these things now? Well, if you have a geometry collection selected like we have here, then you can go down to clustering. There's a grouping here that says enable clustering and cluster levels and such things, but you also have a damage threshold here. This one represents what kind of impact is needed for the solid object, which is our root level, this one, to break down into the next level. So when we're on index zero, we need to have this much force applied to it or damage before it breaks down into this level. And equally here, you also have another index saying that you need this amount of damage and that's what's needed to break these parts into these parts, depending on where you do the damage, of course. So that's what the, the cluster threshold damage levels are all about. If you at any point don't want to see the actual cluster fragments, but instead see the mesh, all you need to do is hold down shift and press B, and it will translate you between the two different modes of showing the clusters and showing the, the mesh. Or you can go to your chaos settings over here and you can go to uh, chaos physics general tab and in here you should have a show bone colors and this represents the same as the shortcuts so let's start breaking some stuff so in this project here we have a gun which we can pick up which if we open up in our outline over here we can see our bp rifle opening up this blueprint over here, we can see that uh, this thing has a bound event which says that it fires a projectile and spawns this projectile over here. If we go to this projectile, uh, we have the projectile that we will be interacting in the world with. So let's modify this one, but what we want to do here is I'm going to show you two different ways of how we can accomplish some damage. The first part, we will just be removing all of the code here on event hit, compile save, and then we'll go into here and we'll see that we have a collision component which consists of a volume. This is more visible if we actually hide the ball here, uh, like so. So this is the volume in here, which is the collision component. And then we have a sphere which is exactly the same size, essentially. So. Uh, let's see if we can get the visibility back. Uh, there we go. So what's happening here is we have a volume which interacts through its collision uh, constraints, which we can find over here. Collision presets. We can see that it, there is a component or a grouping called destructible. And this volume blocks uh, destructible, which means that if we go in here and shoot with our character, then uh, nothing is happening with the mesh. Also, I'm going to turn off the sound so we don't have that loud noise. So let's go over here to our rifle. And let's see, where do we have? There we have sound. Let's see what we do else. We play a montage. Okay, let's just skip the sound and do the montage, I suppose. Like so. 
Okay. Um, so that's one thing. It just bounces off. And the reason for this is that the sphere is preventing collision, essentially. So if we go to our destructible here and tell it to overlap instead for the collision component, and then go to our sphere, which is our mesh, and we go and change its collision detections to be over here, it's set to no collision. If we change this to block all, this will essentially mean that this object here will try to overlap and just pull push through destructible components, but this sphere will say that it's blocking everything, which will cause a very dramatic effect when it comes to actually shooting objects. As you see, the whole thing just basically explodes all of it and gets thrown around. So that's one way you can go about uh, causing destruction uh, when it comes to uh, chaos. Another one is if we go and duplicate our first person projectile and call this, uh, actually let's call it two, it's fine. And we open that one up. For this one, if we want to do something a little bit different is we can take our sphere, our mesh, and we drag it to where the volume is and actually remove the volume because we don't need it. Now the sphere will react or act as the main component of this object. Uh, one of the things that will happen is that it will be very large. So we'll start off by scaling it down, uh, begin play, and we'll just set the, the sphere world scale to be something like uh, 0.1 in all axes. This will make it look uh, pretty much like it did when we were shooting it in the other projectile. Now, in this one, we can now do some other settings here. We can do some things like, because the, the clustering will happen depending on the force that's impacted on it. And force is determined partially by the mass of an object. So if we go here to our mass, for example, and we put in a value here that's like, I don't know, 50, and we tell it to simulate physics, and we go to our rifle and tell it to use our other projectile. Uh, we call it two something, first person projectile. Now we should be shooting our uh, new projectiles, which might be difficult to see because we, we made it look essentially the same, but you can see now that we're shooting this and it's not getting actually through the, the object itself here. You can see, however, though, that as I am shooting, I am getting cracks every now and then, and eventually the object starts to break. Uh, this is partly because of the mass of the object. If we were to set something higher, like 500, then the force will be much higher when we shoot objects with this. So now we can see that we get much larger consequences when it comes to the breakage. And if we were to put something ridiculous here, like 50,000, then this projectile that we're shooting is actually like many tons of weight and it's just crashing through with that kind of force. So these are two ways you can approach uh, doing chaos destruction and even with this little knowledge we can already do some pretty cool things and here you can see a scene using what we have learned so far throwing in some mega quixel scan objects you can easily make something that looks really fun to destroy immediately and the effect is really nice uh, but we will be building upon this further moving on Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.